Less than 1% of players have this fighting style, and this accessory is the best in the whole game. These are 21 secret items that you missed in the third C. And starting off, the very first item on this list is the Dark Dagger. And I bet at least 90% of you guys watching it have never even laid your hands on this item because it's extremely, extremely rare. The NPC that you get it from is the Rip Indra Raid Boss, not the Rip Indra NPC, because that would be way too easy. The Rip Indra Raid Boss is probably one of the strongest bosses in the whole game. He's literally a level 5,000 boss, and he has two different forms. In his first form, you have to do 425,000 damage to him and then in the second form he heals back all the way to max hp so total you have to do more than 750,000 damage to him and he also uses the dark blade and the dark blade slayer skin as his weapons and he also has a bunch of admin abilities but he does drop you a bunch of cool stuff and one of those items is the dark dagger and that's the reason this item is incredibly rare because you only have a five percent drop chance after killing this boss and with all the tedious stuff you have to do to spawn in this boss and the amount of pure strength it takes to kill him you already know this item is probably one of the rarest in the whole game and the reason it's called the dark dagger is because it's actually kind of similar to the Dark Blade. The effects of the weapon are kind of similar. I mean, just take a look at this. It's a tiny weapon, but it still deals a decent amount of damage. The first ability is called Proficient Impale, where you dash straight into your enemy and send them flying, and this attack actually does break instinct. The next ability is called Slamming Slash, where you dash into your enemy and start slicing the crap out of them, and then you send them flying. This sword, or dagger, I guess, has amazing combo potential and very low click cooldown. Literally 0.2 seconds, that's incredibly less. But it is kind of hard to use because you do need good aim. Anyways, moving on from the Dark Dagger, the next item that I got here is Electric Claw. And most of you watching should know what Electric Claw is, but you probably don't know how to get this fighting style. First of all, you should know that the Electric Claw fighting style is the upgraded version of the Electric fighting style, so you do need to have that fighting style to unlock this one. The very first thing you need to do is obviously get the Electric fighting style and then get a 400 mastery on it. Once you've done that, you have to head over to the Floating Turtle Island and then you have to talk to this NPC called the Previous Hero. And if your Electric fighting style is at a 400 mastery, then he's gonna give you a quest to get to the mansion in under 30 seconds. But you can kind of cheese this quest by just setting your spawn point at the mansion and just teleporting there once the quest starts. After completing the quest, you simply have to head back to the previous hero NPC and then pay him a total of 3 million belly as well as 5,000 fragments. You can unlock the electric claw fighting style and you can equip it from him at any time you want. Anyways, let's get into the abilities of this fighting style. The very first ability of this fighting style is called Electrical Rampage, where you dash into enemy and start scratching the crap out of them and you deal a good amount of damage to them. Then we got the X ability, which is called Lightning Thrust, with a 220 master requirement. For this one, you dash straight into your enemy and just explode with electricity, dealing a butt ton of damage to them. Then we got the C ability, which is called Thunderclap and Flash, where you dash all around your enemy and slam them, sending them flying. This fighting style does one of the highest damage out of every single fighting style in the game. The good things about it is that the quest to get it is extremely easy, it has really high damage, pretty high mobility, and all of its moves have good end lag. The bad thing is obviously the requirements to get it. You need 3 million belly, 5,000 fragments, and a 400 mastery on the electric style. Let me just tell you, that is no easy task. Anyways, moving on to the next item, I got a sword. This one is called the Fox Lamp. This sword was actually added in update 22 when the Kitsune fruit was added. But anyways, this is a legendary sword and the way you get it is at the Kitsune Island, which isn't actually a normal island in the game and you do have to do some special things to get there. So once you get to the island, you basically have a chance of being rewarded by the Kitsune Shrine. But you do have to offer up to 15 Azura Embers, which is also a pretty difficult item to obtain. And you also have to do this during the blue moon, so that just makes it incredibly more difficult. The very first ability of the sword is called Scorching Azure, where you basically just shoot a bunch of blue flames balls that just start hitting the crap out of your enemy and deals a butt ton of damage to them. Then we got the X ability which is called Infernal Firestorm where you dash into your enemy and just pummel them with a bunch of Kitsune fire. And the effects for the sword just look extremely cool. Good things about the sword is that it has extremely high damage and both of its moves have really low end lag. But it does have really high mastery requirements and it's pretty difficult to obtain. Moving on, the next item that you missed is the Pale Scarf. And you might have seen this accessory in the game because it is pretty popular but it is no easy task to get. Before I tell you how to get this accessory, let me tell you the buffs it gives you. First, it increases your blocks fluid and sword damage by 15% which doesn't seem like much but when you're fighting someone it's gonna come handy a butt ton. Then it gives you two instinct dodges and it increases your instinct vision range by 10 times. That literally just lets you see the whole island that you're standing on with your instinct, which is incredibly overpowered. But since it's overpowered, you already know it's going to be incredibly difficult to get. To get the Bale Scarf, the first thing you have to do is defeat the Cake Prince boss, which is way easier said than done. To spawn him in, you have to destroy 500 enemies at Cake Land in the Sea of Treats, and then you have to talk to the Drip Mama NPC. Once you do that, he's going to open the portal to where the Cake Prince spawns. Keep in mind, you can also get the Scarf after defeating the Doe King, but I recommend doing the Cake Prince because 
because it's just a lot easier. But if you're looking to awaken your rubber food and get this at the same time, then you can obviously go with the Doe King. But keep in mind, you do have to get a lot of people to help you and make sure you deal at least 10% damage to the boss or else you won't get any of the drops. Moving on, the next item that I got here is a gun. And I know most guns in the game are pretty bad, but this one is incredibly good. This is a mythical gun and it's called the Soul Guitar. And the way you get it is by talking to an NPC or a machine, I guess. It's called the Word Machine and you basically have to finish a puzzle called the Soul Guitar Puzzle, which involves the full moon. So it is pretty difficult to get the timing right for this one. Once you finish the puzzle, you do have to get 500 bones, 250 ectoplasm, one dark fragment, and 5,000 fragments. Once you do that, you can go talk to the weird machine again, and then you should be able to craft the soul guitar. The reason the soul guitar is actually good is because you don't need to be a gunman to make this useful. Because since both of its abilities break instinct, you can kind of just use this ability to start a combo on your opponent. Anyways, let's get into the abilities themselves. The very first one is called Soul Shaker, where you just charge up a huge beam of energy and just send it flying towards your enemy. Then we got the X ability, which is called El Diablo, where you basically summon a huge beam of energy into the sky, and it starts dealing damage to everything surrounding it. It's an incredibly overpowered ability. Overall, this gun does have high damage, that is, if you are a gun mate. And the most overpowered thing about this gun is that its M1 can actually break instinct. That means you can just basically spam break instinct on players. And that's the reason this is considered the best gun in the game for PvP. Anyways, moving on, the next item that I got here is a sword, and this is the Pole V2, which is a legendary sword. This sword is the upgraded version of the Pole Sword, which you can get by defeating the Thunder God NPC. But you might be wondering, how do I get the Pole Sword to Pole V2? Well, the first thing you have to do is to get the Pole First form to 180 mastery, which doesn't seem like a lot, but just wait till you see what you have to do next. You have to completely awaken your rubble fruit with a 250 mastery. That is just crazy. And then you finally have to complete a rubble raid with the rubble fruit equipment. Once you do that, you're gonna be teleported to a place where you can interact with a Thunder God NPC, and then he's just gonna let you purchase the pole v2 for 5,000 fragments. And keep in mind, you're not gonna lose your pole v1 sword, you're just gonna get two different swords. The very first ability of the sword is called Hand of God, where you shoot lightning out of your sword and deal a butt ton of damage to whatever you hit. Then we got the X ability which is called Electrical Prism, where you just send out a button of lightning that just shocks the crap out of your enemies. The good thing about this sword is that it has pretty high stuns and good damage, and both of its moves actually damage CBs. But it is incredibly difficult to get because there's a mastery requirement for a fruit and the sword, which is incredibly weird. The next thing that I got here is a fighting style, and this is Dragon Talon, which is the upgraded version of Dragon's Breath. To get this, you first have to get the Fire Essence by rolling random surprises at the Death King, who's located at the Haunted Castle. Then you have to go talk to the Uzoth NPC and then give him the Essence. Once you do that, you have to meet these requirements. You have to have at least a 400 mastery on Dragon's Breath and then pay Uzoth 3 million belly as well as 5,000 fragments. Anyways, let's get into the abilities of this fighting style. The very first ability is called Dragon Lighter, where you dash straight into your enemy and just charge up a huge flame that literally turns blue and then you just send them flying. Then we got the X ability, which is called Ember Annihilation, where you just shoot out a flaming projectile that deals a decent amount of damage. Then we got the C ability, which is called Infernal Vortex, where you basically just charge up a fire tornado and you kind of just explode inwards. It's a pretty weird ability. Overall, the good things about this fighting style is that it has big hitboxes, high damage, and it's pretty easy to aim, but it is incredibly hard to obtain and most of its moves are close range. Moving on, the next item that you missed is a sword, and this is the spiky trident. And the way you get this is actually same as the pale scarf from before. You just have to defeat the cake prince and you have a 10% chance of getting it dropped to you. Moving on, we got yet another accessory, and this one is called the Leviathan Shield. This is a mythical accessory, so you already know it's good, and the way you get it is by crafting it at the Beast Hunter. You have to pay one mirror fractal, 30 Leviathan scales, 10 electric wings, and 20 fool's gold, and it gives you a 15% defense against melee sword and gun attacks, as well as a 30 percent defense against sea events which is incredibly good and a 90 percent defense against water damage which basically means that you can swim for at least a short period of time without taking much damage and it also increases your health by a thousand which is just incredibly incredibly overpowered and i think this is the best defense accessory in the whole game moving on i got a sword which is definitely a top three in the whole game this is the cursed dual katana also known as the cdk and the place you get it is at the floating turtle by defeating the cursed skeleton boss but you do have to finish the puzzle before it and to even start the puzzle you need to have a 350 mastery on the Yama and Tushida swords. And also, you do have to be at least level 2200. Once you do that, you can unlock this sword. The very first ability of the sword is called Revolting Ravager, where you just charge up a huge long range attack and just send it flying to wherever your cursor aims. Then we got the X ability, which is called Slayer Goliath, which is the exact same thing, but this time the attack is just light speed. It's almost impossible to dodge. This sword has incredibly good combo potential and probably the highest damage out of every sword in the game. But obviously, the downside is that it's incredibly difficult to obtain because you need two other swords and you need to have a 350 mastery of both of them. Moving on, the next item that I got here is a fighting style and this is not just any fighting style it's the most overpowered fighting style in the whole game this is god human and the way you get it is by having a 400 mastery on superhuman death step electric claw sharkman karate and dragon talon and keep in mind to get each of those fighting styles you need to have a 300 mastery on all of the fighting styles before them which is just incredibly tedious once you get that you can go talk to the ancient monk npc who's going to sell you the fighting style for 5 million belly 5,000 fragments and 10 dragon scales 20 fish tails 10 mystic droplets and 20 magma ore then you finally get your hands on this overpowered fighting style. 
The very first ability of this fighting style is called Soaring Beast, where you dash into your enemy and just pummel the crap out of them. Then we got the X ability, which is called Heaven and Earth, where you just shoot out a really overpowered projectile. Then we got the C ability, which is called Sixth Realm Gun, where you dash into your enemy and just send them flying. And if you do hold the key down, then you're actually gonna punch the crap out of them before you send them flying, making it deal a butt ton of damage. The good things about this fighting style is that it's the most overpowered fighting style in the whole game, but the downsides is that it's just really tedious to get. Moving on to the next thing in the third C that you missed, this is Race V4. And the requirements for this is obviously having the race that you want to get to V4 and at least V3. Then you have to defeat the Rip Indra boss, complete the Sealed King quest, get one Mirror Fractal which you get from defeating the Doking, then you have to get the blue gear on Mirage Island, and you need two other players with different races at least near V3-4. Then you have to finish the training task from the Ancient One, and this is just really tedious. And then finally you unlock the V4 of your race. And the V4 for each race is different, and race V4 is just a really overpowered thing to have. It's incredibly good for PvP and just your general enjoyment in the game. Moving on, the next thing that I got here is a sword, and this is the Halo Scythe. This is a mythical sword, and you get it by defeating a boss called the Soul Reaper. And you can spawn in the Soul Reaper after getting Halo Essence from the Death King. Once you defeat this boss, you have a 5% chance of getting the sword dropped to you. The very first ability of the sword is called Death Cyclone, where you just send out a spiraling fire tornado towards your enemy, and it deals a decent amount of damage to them. Then we got the X ability, which is called Soul Execution, and it does exactly what it sounds like. You charge into your enemy, and you just execute them with your sword. I mean, you don't literally kill them, because that would just be way too overpowered, but it does deal a butt ton of damage to them. And a pretty cool thing about this sword is that it actually deals more damage if your enemy is below 50% health. So you can kind of take advantage of enemies that have low HP when you're using this sword. Moving on, the next item that I got here is a fighting style that's debatably on the same level as God Human. This is a Sanguine Art fighting style, and you can only get this in the third C. You can get this from an NPC called Shafi, but before that, you need to give Shafi a Leviathan heart, which you get by defeating the Leviathan boss, which you get after defeating the Leviathan and using the harpoon from the Beast Hunter ship to carry it all the way back to Tiki Outpost. Then you have to get it into your inventory. And keep in mind, you will lose the heart when you buy this fighting style, so just make sure you keep that in mind before you buy it. Once you give this heart to the NPC, it's gonna tell you to get a total of 20 Demonic Wisps, 20 Vampire Fangs, and 2 Dark Fragments. And once you give those items to the NPC, you're finally gonna be able to get this fighting style after paying 5 million belly and 5,000 fragments. The very first ability of this fighting style is called Bloodbane Drain. We charge into your enemy and just start beating that crap out of them, and then you send them flying, dealing a butt ton of damage to them. Then we got the X ability, which is called Scarlet Tear, where you just shoot out a small sword like projectile towards your enemy that deals a lot of damage. Then we got the C ability, which is called Devourer of Worlds, where you shoot out an orb into the sky that just aimbots onto your enemy and deals a lot of damage to them. That's pretty much it.